You've seen the eels. You've witnessed the shocks. But now, it's time to learn what really happened when I was electrocuted by a giant electric eel. Lurking in the murky waters of the Amazon basin lives the world's most mysterious predator. Stalking, waiting, seemingly invisible, and without warning, can ambush its unsuspecting prey with a vicious jolt of electricity. The electric eel is one of the most infamous creatures on the planet. And earlier this year, I put myself in the middle of the craziest experiment I've ever attempted. The following is the true story of what really happened. But before we get to that, let's relive both shocks one more time. Right now, I'm about to stick my hand in this tank to experience the shock of an electric eel. And if you can't tell, I am definitely nervous. This is easily the craziest thing I've ever done on the Brave Wilderness Channel. Whew. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how nervous I am right now. Oh, all right, here we go. Gonna go for a shock. Here we go. One, two, three. Ah, whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wow! Holy smokes! You definitely do not expect that from a fish. You never in your life expect a fish to be able to shock you like that. All right. Here comes the big shock. I'm Mark Vins, and this is getting shocked by a really big electric eel. Here goes nothing. One, two. Oh, I can feel it in the water. Three. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh. You okay, Mark? Hold oh, on, give me a second. That really felt bad. Oh. Hi everybody, I'm Mark Vins, and on today's very special video, I'm going to be talking about the craziest thing that I've ever done for the Brave Wilderness channel. A few months ago, I got shocked, not once, but twice by the world's most powerful electric creature, which of course is none other than the electric eel. Yes, it was absolutely crazy, but the one thing that I noticed after we released the video was the outpouring of questions from the audience. So to start off today's video, I'm going to answer some of those questions, and then we're going to take a deeper dive into some of the science behind this mysterious creature. So to kick things off, why did I do it in the first place? Totally valid, totally reasonable question to ask. Well, truth be told, I've been wanting to make this video for many, many years, yet as we started Brave Wilderness, we just couldn't connect that dot to actually making it happen. However, the situation recently did present itself where I could take a shock from this animal, but also in a way that was visually significant. Because one of the things that was obvious from the first shock was you really can't see getting shocked. You're just seeing my, ah, and did I take a shock? Did I not? Am I acting? Is it real? Is it fake? All those things come into play. So we knew there had to be a way for you to see it. In comes Diana, the physics girl, and her friend's architect. <laughs> What? That is all the eel. The fact that an animal can actually produce an electric charge up to 860 volts just completely blew my mind. So I had to know firsthand if it was actually true and if I could show it to you, the audience. That's why I got shocked by an electric eel. Second question I saw a lot, was I nervous? Well, I said so many times in the video, so I thought that was pretty obvious. I am definitely nervous. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how nervous I am right now. I'm usually so excited to see you. Why am I nervous right now? <laughs> oh, I'm so nervous. I was so nervous earlier. This is making it way, way worse. Yes, I was absolutely nervous. I was actually like losing sleep leading up to the filming of this video because I didn't know what was gonna happen. There's not a lot of videos out there about getting shocked by an electric eel. When I was first putting my hand in the water, there was a lot of anticipation of like, am I gonna take a shock as, like, as soon as I breach the surface? But I can't tell you, I was not able to take a shock just by merely having my hand in the water. I actually had to make contact, but I will tell you this, as soon as I touched the eel, wha-bam, like right away. Like it was not like a delayed reaction. It was like instant electrical jolt, which leads me to my next question. Did it hurt? Yeah, 
It hurt a lot. The first one stunned me. The second shock, the shock heard around the world was unbelievably powerful. I would estimate that this was the full charge, like the full capacity for an electric eel to shock something that blew the fuse in the Tesla coil. That's actually what happened. The fuse blew. You could see a big green flash and hear a crazy noise. That was the fuse in the Tesla coil actually exploding. After that sound, I got super nervous because I got dizzy, like I locked up. I remember thinking to myself, oh crap, oh crap, don't fall. Don't fall into the tank. Don't fall off of the platform. Get yourself to a place where you can splay out. So I backed up quickly and I just remembered falling on my butt. For the rest of the evening, I actually had some lingering after effects. I had uh, tingles up and down my arm. I, my neck was super hot. My ear turned really red. It just like this whole side of my face felt hot for the rest of the night. Now, that's one thing Diana told me and um, our friends at Architect backed up. Whenever you're shocked or electrocuted, the energy flowing through you has to, has to ground somewhere else. Um, that can be into the air, that can be into the water, but the energy goes through you and flows somewhere. In this case, it flowed right out my ear because you could see how red my ear turned and the other ear was not red at all. The next question, can the eels shock over and over? Yes, they absolutely can. In fact, if you go back and you watch the second shock, let's see that one more time. Oh, yeah. Ooh, never get over that. You'll notice that the charge doesn't dissipate. It actually goes up. And that's how they're incapacitating their prey. It's not necessarily just one shock, it's lots of shocks. That is how an electric eel operates. And I unfortunately had to experience that firsthand. How dangerous was getting shocked by an electric eel? Well, I can say this, it's not completely safe and I definitely don't recommend anybody take a shock if the opportunity presents itself. Now that being said, I felt I was able to go through with this because I had consulted with enough safety professionals and people with enough first-hand accounts to feel that I had a pretty good chance of surviving this experience. But that being said, there was certainly no guarantee that I was going to be safe. And with that, let's talk about some science. Because the other reason I wanted to make this video was to talk more about the facts of this animal. The eel shock video was crazy, but we didn't really get to dive super deep into the details about this mysterious creature. So with that, here are my favorite facts about the electric eel. Fact number one, their name. The electric eel has somewhat been mislabeled by its early discoverers. While they certainly look like an eel and are commonly called just that, an electric eel isn't really an eel at all. It is a member of the knifefish family and are more closely related to carp or catfish. It gets its name from its eel-shaped body, which can grow up to nine feet long and weigh nearly 50 pounds at full size. Fact number two, the air breather. These creatures are native to South American rivers, but they do not spend all their time under the surface. Since they can only extract about 20% of the oxygen they need from the muddy water in which they live, they will surface every 10 to 15 minutes to breathe air. That's right, these fish have lungs. Fact number three, yes, they can shock. Using its highly specialized nervous system, the electric eel can activate disc-shaped electricity-producing cells packed into three specialized organs. The main organ, hunter's organ, and sac's organ all contain electrogenic cells and through a command nucleus can decide when the electric shock will fire. An array of nerves ensures that all these thousands of electric shocking cells can activate at once. Pow! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Fact number four, it's all lopsided. While 80% of the eel is its tail and dedicated to making the electric shock, everything else has to be held in the front 20%, including its head and vital organs. In fact, if you look just below the chin, you can see its vent. And for a fish, the vent is its butt. Yeah. Fact number five, electric eels are mostly blind. Those two little beads on the eel's head are its eyes. However, they don't function very well since the electric eel is mostly blind. Instead of relying on sight, they will use a radar-like system of electrical pulses to navigate their way through murky water and hunt for their food. Fact number six, hunting with the lightning. Along with fending off predators, the electric eel will also use their electricity to hunt prey. The ability to stun prey like small crustaceans or fish makes for an easy meal, 
which is important because believe it or not, these eels have no teeth and must swallow their food whole. Fact number seven, how much electricity can they generate? Given the fact that 80% of the eel's body is dedicated to producing electricity, it may come as no surprise that the electric eel can pack the biggest wallop of all electric species in the world, generating up to 860 volts. However, that's not the end of the story. Voltage, as we learned, is not the end-all be-all of the shock, where in this case I'm just stunned because the amperage is actually very low. So when it comes to electric shocks, it's all about the amperage. So there you have it, my favorite facts about the electric eel. I hope you learned something new through that, and I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the craziest thing that I've ever done for Brave Wilderness, getting shocked, not once, but twice, by an electric eel. I'm Mark Vins, be brave, stay wild, we'll see you next time.